So here's my certificate authority. Okay. I'm going to go to VM. I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to go ahead and hide a bunch of disks. Remember, when you want to set up your disk array or RAID solution, it essentially involves you having multiple disks. So in our lab, we're going to simulate that by coming over to this place. Again, I'm going to show you again, just to make sure everybody's uh, same page. Go to settings. And uh, it's coming up. So I go to hide. And the only thing I want to hide throughout is just the disk. Hide disk. And I'll hide something very, very little. Just one gig. Okay. I'm going to hide more. Uh, no, because I want to simulate rate solution. Yeah. So it's not about size now. It's about redundancy. You can have a 200 terabyte that doesn't have redundancy. And I can have just one gig that has redundancy. So, so I'm just simulating a situation where uh, you're going to have a, a disk or a solution that somebody's going to say, well, we really do need. And your CA will be an example. So, for example, so I'm going to try, I have a four disk now. And I'm going to show you really quick what it feels like to have that, you know, requirement. So what I've done so far now is to attach like four new disks. Again, as I've told you earlier on, you can do everything from your dashboard. You understand? You can do just about everything from your dashboard. Uh, and if you see that there is something you wanted to do that you couldn't do from your dashboard, there is a good chance that you're doing something wrong. Does that make any sense? So here is it. I've got the tools here. And I go to computer management. From my computer management, I'm going to load up here, disk management, and you would see all the four disks that I've just added. You will see from your explorer, you only see just one C drive. At the bottom here, look at this. I have my disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, and disk 4. Those are the four disks that I added earlier on. And this will happen normally in real life. If you actually go to the store market and plug in a four, four disk, the first thing you're seeing over here is saying unknown. Okay? It's saying unknown because it's offline. Okay? So, because of policies set by an administrator. So, on 2016 server and even 2012, when you connect a hard drive to a server, the policy is there to make sure it's offline. They don't want somebody to accidentally connect a drive and make sure that our drive is online by default. So you can come over here and say, I want to put it online. See that? I just put it online. The same thing for this, online. I'm going to go down here and do for the remaining two, online. And then also here, what? Online. What do I have here now? Not initialized. What does that mean? not started he's saying that there's no MBR master boot record not initialized means I've seen a disk I see something that's online but I have no way of understanding it see the MBR or GPT MBR specifically is occupying the first sector of your disk okay the MBR is really what defines your disk so if I have a disk like this the first sector here is my MBR. The MBR defines the entire disk. Tells you how many partitions you have on this disk, what the size, and so on and so forth. That's MBR. What is the difference between an MBR and boot sector?
Okay, I'll explain to you. So if I have uh, three partitions here, so this first sector here is my MBR, then I'm going to have my boot sector here. See, MBR defines the entire disk. Boot sector only defines the partition. You see that? Traditionally, they are about the same size on a, on a traditional uh, <coughs> disk. So, if your boot sector get corrupt, what message do you get? Operating system not found. Because your operating system, your partition information is defined in the boot sector. If your NBR is corrupt, what, what message do you get? Hard disk not found. You know what I'm saying? Because hard disk is how your system is able to interpret the disk. MBR is just the partition on the disk. All right, so I'm going to come over here right now. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say initialize disk. Look at it now. It gives me option. It said, Do you want to make it MBR master boot record? With MBR, I have two terabytes as my size limit, and this one I have almost like 128 exabyte or something. That's pretty light. So here we're going to go with MBR and I'm going to say OK. And then look at it now. It's seen all the four disks that I've just had attached. Let me now quickly go through RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 with you. Okay? If I right click this, I can create a simple volume, just a simple volume. And I'm just going to call this, let's call this one, uh, uh, you know, how about make it 250 megabyte. Okay? Here is just a simple partition. I can even call this one. Let's call it a simple. Okay. Make it NTFS. And it's finished. And you can see now I've just created a partition. Look at it up here. Now, now you can see it in the browser. In your Windows Explorer. You see? You can see that even though I have all these disks available, they are not usable yet until I create a partition, right? Something like that. A partition, therefore, is the usable part of your disk. Does that make any sense? I have a lot of disks here right now, but they are not usable to me for a user because there is no partition on them. All right? Now, let me go ahead and do something else more. What about RAID? You know, RAID, RAID 0, right? I can do that. What I get with RAID 0 is striping. There is absolutely no uh, redundancy solution with striping. I'm going to try and see if I can uh, draw something on the screen to explain what that does. So with my striping, I have a, if I have to the disk here, and I want to write three kilobytes of data. So I say three kilobytes here. This is just an example, very simplistic of our, our idea of this. I have my three controllers here. It's just going to take this three kilobytes and split it into three. One is going to get written over here, one is written over here, one is written over here. So a little here, a little here, a little here. What will have taken me three minutes, for example, how many minutes will it now take? one because the workload has been shared across three disks if i were writing it on one disk before it would take me three minutes but now three guys three controllers are writing at the same time and the workload has been split into three so it takes one so the rate of writing and reading from the disk is very fast however if one of these guys goes down game over the main difference between what you see here, disk striping and disk uh, spanning, is that with the spanning, you don't have information spread across like this. If I want to write three kilobytes, I'm going to write my entire three kilobytes here. 
it is when this is full that I go back and write here. And when this is full, I go back and write here. There is no advantage of speed here. You understand what I'm saying? Because only one of these is engaged. The only thing you get is small story. That's all. Still, if this guy goes down, everybody goes down. And of course, everybody understands mirroring, right? You're just having one disc mirror the other one. That's really what we're doing here. So, coming back here, if I want to say striping here, I can involve three discs. I can add this one to part of it. I can even stripe all the entire four. And I can say, you know what? I only want to have a 250. And you can see they all have to bring in the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? They all have to be the same thing. Now, here, I'm going to call this striping. Okay? You can do a quick format if I want. And it's saying, if I do this, it's going to convert this from basic to dynamic disk. I'm going to say fine. And you could see it will go through, apply this to all the three disk area. And you can see now striping, right? So if you look at this, it cuts across four disks, isn't it? But how many letters it appears as one? So to a user that is using this disk, it doesn't see four disks. You understand what I'm saying? That's why on Amazon you pay more money for this. If you say you want a faster disk and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, redundancy is not an option for you. You don't, you know, you're living dangerously. This is what you're really doing here. This is like I want it fast, I want it quick, and if this thing go blows up, forget about it. I don't care. Then you could pay a little more money, and you are on a solid state striped disk. You get the advantage of speed and storage at the same time. Let's go ahead and do spanning. I can involve all this for as well. Can bring four disk. Here I can say I want to do 250 as well for spanning. And here I can say do a quick format, go to next, go to finish. And now you can see cut across for disk as well, but it's only spanning. Right? But the difference between G and F, this is super, super fast. Okay? This, not so fast. Actually, there's no difference between uh, this guy and this guy. The only difference between this and this is with this, you are able to expand your storage indefinitely. Does that make any sense? If you need 500 terabytes more tomorrow, just add more disk to the, to the pool. And then it gets bigger. There is actually no limit. This gives you elastic, you know, uh, elastic uh, storage. Whereby, if you need more, you get more. If you don't need more, you, you can shrink it out, and so on and so forth. All right? So the other part is the, you know, uh, so one, one thing we did over here, you can see that the option for my dicks are uh, uh, mirroring and grayed out. Anybody know why? Yeah, I don't have another driver camera right now. But the beauty of virtualization is I can actually go and add more disk. Cost me almost nothing. Go over here and just add one disk. One more disk. You have to if you to demonstrate that. Just make sure you're not hiding much. You know, one you can even have 500 megabytes. It's really 
it's just to kind of show you a demo of something. It's really not a uh, You have to do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. If I ask you to do it. So I bring you back up online. That's what I did earlier. Go ahead and initialize both of them. They are initialized now. Now I have my disk uh, mirror now. See that? And you can see, so you can mirror this one and this takes a bit of an option. Right? Mm -hmm. And I could say, alright, I'm going to mirror this and I can mirror that. I can bring this one in. I'm going to go to next year. Right? And I can call this mirror. that's it so with this simple example we've essentially just show you how to do this mirror uh, spanning you know striping and a simple volume okay they are actually a lot simpler than they look now we are putting in this example we're putting all the workload on the CPU In a production environment, especially if it's a very active production environment, you want to get a RAID card. Okay? There's a, there's a card. You can buy that online. Uh, let me see if I can uh, go, go and show you what that looks like. A RAID, you know, controller. So this is what it looks like. See that? So you're actually buying this card and putting it on your server and all the calculation, all the workload of doing this calculation, this card is going to take it. So this thing has a CPU on it. So that will free up your the CPU of your system from having to do this additional ca rate calculation. Does that make any sense? Um, if you do not do that and you go with this solution, you are actually adding more workload uh, on your uh, on your RAID controller. It's, it's your call. There are times when it's, it's not a big deal, uh, but there are times 